Hey everyone, you are tuning in to the AfterBuzz TV After Show for American Music Awards. Tonight we're going to be talking about all the best and worst fashion and your favorite performances. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss it. You're tuning in to the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hey everyone, and welcome to the AfterBuzz TV After Show for the American Music Awards. I am so excited to be talking about this Amazing show. I'm your host, Danny Golub. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Danny Golub. We have a very exciting panel here tonight. We have a special guest visiting us from E, who was on the red carpet herself, which is really exciting because we're going to have some inside scoop about who looked good in person. Where can they find you on Twitter and Instagram? Hey guys, so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. You guys can find me on Instagram at Liza.Rubin or Fat But Skinny But Fat for some food adventures. Yeah, you guys definitely want to check that out. And where can they find you, Lauren? You can find me at Lauren T. Pacheco on Instagram and Twitter. So make sure you guys tweet us, DM us, do whatever you need to do if you got some thoughts about what we are talking about right now. Let's start with the best and worst dressed. So I Liza guess. was literally there, like one inch <laughs> away from all these stars, which is crazy. We're gonna have like a lot of inside scoop. Um, let's just start with, let's start with the worst, just to get them out of the way. How about that? Love um, the worst. Yeah, love the worst. I like wanna end always on a positive note. So we're gonna start with the worst. Um, let's start with, uh, Nick Cannon. Um, <laughs> Nick was wearing like a leather jacket situation. We're gonna hopefully pull some pics up for you guys so you guys can know what we're talking about. He was wearing this leather jacket with like pink writing on it, big gaucho -y pants, and a turban, which he always wears. But like, what did you guys think of this look? For me, this was a worst dress. You don't have to agree with me, but what'd you think? N this was also my worst dress. Was it not yours? <laughs> no, oh yeah, no, that was a bad. <laughs> That was okay. not a positive <laughs> beep noise. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not impressed. Um, for me, I feel like the AMA's carpet is kind of a time to play with style, and I, I feel like especially for men, um, they show up and they kind of rock whatever they want. Uh, Nick Cannon, what the hell, man? Nick usually makes some really good fashion choices too. Like on America's Got Talent, he used to when he used to host, like wore crazy cool shoes and like amazing suits and like I was ready for him to wear something cool like that but instead he kind of went in this other direction that I wasn't here for right I I'm always... not about it at all yeah. the turban I don't understand and he keeps wearing them but I don't know why yeah because I don't think it's like a I, I just don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know. If, maybe if it's a religious thing, maybe yeah, it is, maybe it isn't. I don't, I don't know. Either way, like, it's bright pink, and, like, it matches the clothes. This was just a bit of a miss for me, um, personally, because I think Nick usually dresses really well, and I was ready to see him, like, show up in something amazing. This was a miss for me. Um, another on the personal worst dress list was um, Julian Michaels. Julia Michaels, apologies. Um, I She wore this red dress, and it was too much mm -hmm. and too little in all the wrong places like it was just too big for me I didn't love this on her and she's such a pretty tiny girl and I feel like she drowned a little bit in this dress yeah I agree okay so I did see this one up close um so she was just she's such a cute tiny little girl she um I don't know if she recently cut her hair but it was kind of slicked back which which I loved yeah her but, head looked amazing like her makeup and hair yeah. yeah and then I didn't realize that it kind of had like a keyhole cut out in the in the front with a little tie until she turned towards the camera a little bit more um I thought the dress kind of drowned her a little bit. She's so small and petite, and I, I don't know, I just, I felt like she was... I love her, but she looks like a loofah. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, I mean, it reminds me I need to go to Target after this. Right. So. You know what it reminds me of? Remember when Rihanna wore, like, that big dress to the Met Gala? This looks like a little bit more toned-down version of that, but I didn't like that, and I don't really love this either, unfortunately. Right. Um, another one for me that was not on my best dress list um, was Lily Singh. She wore a purple dress, and you know what this reminds me of? Something that Heidi Klum would wear that I wouldn't like on Heidi, and I don't really like it on Lily. I think Lily is a beautiful, and again, hair and makeup was really on point, and I actually really loved the color on her skin tone, but the flowers just really ruined this for me. I look at this dress, and I think, without the flowers, I actually might have liked it, right. but I, it was something about, like, the heavy satin, like... It, the AMAs is fun. Like, we'll talk about her in a minute, but, like, Selena Gomez wore, like, what I think of when I think of AMAs. This yes. is, like, a heavy gown. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like you said, glam on point, but I think this looks like a mother of the bride dress. Yeah, Not that's true. That's true. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. This one, like, didn't do it for me. And then, okay, next that I know we're going to have a disagreement about this one, <laughs> on my personal worst dress, yeah. Sabrina Carpenter. <laughs> this looks like... 
to me. She got out of the shower and, like, put on her pajama robe. And I didn't see this in person. I love the boots, love the hair and makeup. Literally cannot stand this dress. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? I don't like it. You don't like it. It's just, also, again, she's such a tiny girl. Yeah. And she's wearing this, like, very drapey dress that's plaid, which I don't understand why. And it just looks like it's too big for her, especially around the bottom. It's not good. And she was trying to show off the boots, yeah, which the boots is like the great. only good thing, yeah. But you can't really see them. Right. And here comes Liza. <laughs> I'm mentally preparing because I have a lot to say about this dress. Okay. Weirdly, I loved this, and I don't know if this is the boho chic in me or my inner hippie coming out. I love this. So um, they actually asked her about her fashion, and she said that this is actually a trench coat, and they just made it into a dress quickly. Um, I don't know. I think there's something so cool about this. She kind of rocked the the over-the-knee boot. I loved it, especially for her first (laughs) kind of, I don't know if it's her first major outing, but she came from... She's like a Disney kid, Yeah, she came from Girl Meets World, and now she's kind of rising up, um, you know, into the music scene. She's a huge Christina Aguilera fan, which she talked about. Mm. I don't know. I I thought this was really cool of her to just do something kind of different that was a little bit more, I don't want to say edged up, but... Up. I don't know. I loved it. I, think I, it, I definitely I think, so think it was cute. more mature than what yeah. we've seen her wear in the past because, like we said, she came from, like, the Disney scene and, like, this is sort of one of her bigger first carpets. It's, like, almost like a coming out for her, which is why I think I expected more. Um, I remember, like, when we first saw, like, Selena and Miley kind of take that transition from Disney star to pop star, like, they were making, I think, some better fashion choices than this for me. But, like, right. I, I don't hate it. Like, it's not my worst dress. I think Julia Michaels was more dramatic and, like, was more of a miss for me than this. But, you know, this just, like, to me, I would wear this, like, over my pajamas. So. <laughs> I don't know. I just loved it. I yeah. love that she just kind of spiced up. She literally just threw on a trench coat, spiced it up with some, that like, knee-high boots. Her hair was so cute. It was in, like, a half-up, half-down um I loved it. Yeah, they're all doing well so on the hair and makeup. Yeah, you know who wore half, ha- hair half up, half down, both for her performance and for the red carpet, was Haley Seinfeld. Oh, I love her. Um, so we'll talk about both. So her black outfit was what she wore for the red carpet, and I absolutely loved this look. She looked hot. This was for me, like, okay, I'm a woman now, and, like, here I am. Mm-hmm. And, like, she's transitioned from, like, 10-year-old who was nominated for an Oscar to, like, I'm in Pitch Perfect and I'm growing up a little. Now, like, here I am as, like, a 20-something-year-old pop star, like, Glam and fabulous. I thought she looked so so Sorry, good. Sorry guys, who are we talking about? Haley Seinfeld. Thank She's you. like second to yeah, right there. Um, this is the outfit that I'm talking about at the moment. Um, we'll talk about her performance outfit as well, which we have, I think. Um, but yeah, did you guys like this carpet look? What do you think? Oh, I loved it. I'm also not a big fan of shoulder pads at all, and I think that she wore them well. So yeah, I don't like shoulder pads at all, but this looks good, and I love. Um, during the show, they showed a picture of her, and she had taken her jacket off, and the underneath like little bralette I don't know what you call that it looks really good this, this designer by the way is uh, I'm gonna butcher it but it's Muggler 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 yeah I don't know it's a great I thought whatever it is I've never heard of them before and I was I was here for it did you like it um I thought it was really cool so when she first came up to the platform funny because we were interviewing Florida Georgia Line and she came right oh and they have that them. song that we opened yeah it. exactly so that you know, wasn't planned. It was just cool that they kind of transitioned after each other. But um, I first, I couldn't see her shoulder pads, and then she kind of walked up, and I was like, wow, I love this. Um, I love the dramatic shoulder pads. By the way, she is absolutely flawless. Like, she is. I think she's been to the AMAs, you know, the past couple of years, and I think this year by far it's really showing how mature yeah. she's getting, um, how she's really developing as an artist in her own right. And you're right, moving up from the Pitch Perfect kind of scene, um, even though Pitch Perfect 3 is coming out. But I thought she did, I don't know, I thought she did a great job with this outfit, or at yeah. least her stylist. Did. Speaking of, yeah, this was actually her first performance at the AMAs, and I think we also have her performance outfit, which I want to talk about as well. Um, her performance outfit was Nicholas Gibran's Spring 2017 Couture. Yes. I'm also going to mess up all those names. Fancy. Don't know, but okay, let's talk about this performance outfit, because first of all, we opened with her song that she sang loved the performance thought it was really fun um it was her first ama performance ever she like posted on her instagram after like sobbing loved the boots hated the trench coat like <gasps> what yeah i i felt like okay i don't i love i it. feel like she tried really hard in this outfit to dress like how ariana grande would dress like a half oh. a half down <laughs> pony 
thigh high glittery boots and like a mini little dress. I like saw her tush hanging out the whole time. I was like, we like tush. I know, I know but yeah, then but she I had like sequin panties. Yeah, on she did. I like wasn't here for the trench coat, but I was here for the boots. Loved the boots. I don't know. I'm, I'm always I want here for the a trench, trench coat. coat. <laughs> I like me a trench coat. Obviously, hashtag Sabrina Carpenter. <laughs> yeah. But I love this. It's so cool, and she just struts around. And I don't know. I think it's so edgy, and I especially love this look. Because it was paired with Florida Georgia Line, who is more, you know, obviously their country. their country, but the collaboration was obviously not country. So it was just cool. I love that she, you know, completely played out the pop aspect of it. She looked like a disco ball. She really did. Oh, but yeah. Um, yeah, it was really fun to watch that performance. I thought it was like different than everything else we saw that night. It was like a cool collaboration. And I love that song and it was cool to see it done live. Um, I had a lot of, yeah, I had a lot of fun watching her. Um, back to the carpet, let's talk about, uh, DJ Khaled and Asad, his son. Um, how cute was he in person? Was he, like, the cutest little, he is the he most well-behaved child. Cute. He's actually such a nugget. And He's so cute. His mom was holding him while, actually, DJ Khaled, um, interrupted, uh, an interview between, it was, um, Jamie oh Foxx Jamie Fox and his daughter Corinne, and so... Asad was just kind of chilling in the back, and then DJ Khaled brought him up, and it was just so cute to watch Jamie and his daughter interact with Asad, and oh my gosh. he, like, he's, he's a so natural well at carpets. He's also so he's well-behaved, so like, have you been around cute. a one-year-old that's just, like, foiling and screaming all no, the time? No, but I was just so quiet. surprised. He was more just curious, like, trying to check out the like, scene, this is his normal life. This is normal <laughs> Well, I was literally now. saying to Eliza before, like, imagine being born and being one years old and having over a million followers on Instagram. Like, he's gonna, like, figure <laughs> out who he is one day and be like, Oh my god! Right. Like this is my life. He didn't have to work for the followers. He yeah. had to do the whole like he hashtag just, like thing. He has to be born. popular page. He just, just has to be call born. It. Yeah, he he's is so, so cute. cute. He's really. I need to point out too that he's wearing like baby loafers, oh. and they're so cute. Like, is this his first steps happening on the red carpet? <laughs> Honestly, probably. And his loafers probably cost more than my car payment. So. Same. Right. Paris, he is Fine. so so cute. Um, and then let's also chat about Demi Lovato. Um, she was wearing, who is she wearing? I have it. She was wearing uh, Esther Abner, I believe. I loved this look. I think that Demi looks amazing in all black. She had this like really long, dark hair last night too. It was kind of like gothic queen in like a cool way. I think that Demi's like having her moment right now. I like, watched her documentary. I'm like really here for everything she's doing right now. Her performance was also amazing and she's one of the few people we'll talk about this but I feel like that actually sang and I love hearing her sing so I don't know I just loved this whole look I think she looks beautiful I'm getting Morticia Adams vibes <laughs> um I mean I love Morticia Adams yeah so don't get me wrong it's not a bad thing um it's simple for her and I think she has so much going on now I'm kind of glad that she took a simple route um she also brought Danica as her date who was the first transgender yep. um woman in office in uh, yeah on, in office um, yeah. but which i thought was so cool and you know having just watched her documentary it made me such a fan she's she has such pure talent and the fact that she's using her voice and platform to you know speak for people that can't i thought was amazing and she was more subdued a lot of people commented that she you know wasn't going crazy or she was kind of like just kind of laid back um, and I loved it during her interview. She kind of let Dominica share this, or Danica. Share this I, I love when they, I love when they do that. Like Miley Cyrus has done that before when she was like promoting Happy Hippie. She mm -hmm. brought like I think someone who was a, originally homeless with her, and like she like helped him get back on his feet. I think it's nice when like she kind of wore something a little bit more toned down, and like I'm not gonna dress like you know a disco ball tonight because it's not about me. It's about this right. other person that I'm sharing the spotlight with. But like, I think she did step it up like for her performance and everything. She was here for it, and like turned it on yes. but I think it's really cool to see someone who's like trying to be such a good role model for young women and I think that this dress is also like appropriate and uh, fits her body beautifully like Demi is someone who's gone through so much you know hell and back to be honest like after hearing her whole story um it's nice to see her like looking healthy and happy and you know yes. fit. I definitely yeah. recommend anyone who hasn't seen her documentary yeah, to see it because I feel like I feel like I understand her so much yeah, better. Right. No, but seriously, she's <laughs> such a natural it. talent. And to me, I had only heard of her doing Barney before and doing Disney Channel, but sh like raw talent, absolutely raw. And I honestly, with someone like Demi, and I think Sorry Not Sorry 
and like some of her new stuff is is much better but like for so long i feel like maybe she wasn't writing her own music i don't know what it was but like bad she was having bad songs but with such a good voice mm -hmm. i think the first time i really liked her was when she did a tribute for someone else at an award show i was like oh, this girl can sing, but her own music is not really my cup of tea, but now it's starting to get more, right. I think she's kind of finding her beat a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, she found yeah. her voice. Um, okay, uh, we have to also talk about um, Selena Gomez, who's an absolute must. She was wearing Coach. Uh, yes. She's partners with Coach. They're like best friends. <laughs> um, they made a custom like leather jacket dress for her. This is literally like my dream dress. I feel like if I could wear anything to like a carpet like this, this is like so what I would want to wear. And we have to talk about her blonde hair. I mean, she fits in with this group of us right here right, right. now. We are the blonde of the moment. But what did you guys think? I was shocked. I, I mean, was she, she copied us. She, she looks yeah. good for having just had a kidney transplant. This is true. And uh, you know what I noticed about this dress? I will say um, she mentioned in her... Uh, I think it was Today Show or Good Morning America, one of those two interviews. I think maybe Today Show it was with Savannah Gunther. So yeah, Today Show. She mentioned in her interview that she permanently now is going to have like this bulge on her side where the kidney was transplanted. Um, and I noticed that leather is a really thick fabric and she's probably still healing. And so I thought it was a good choice probably for this moment while she's like still feeling vulnerable about that. Even though she looked amazing, like literally tiny, tiny, skinny, yeah. um, absolutely beautiful, like head to toe. This is what American Music Awards to me is, like I think. You know, it's like I, I, everyone's in these big gowns and whatever, but I'm like, no, it's not that kind of event. Like the Billboard Music Awards, the American Music Awards, even the VMAs are like, not Grammy's glam. It's a whole different right. type of fashion, and I think this is on point. Yeah, I agree. That's why I think I think Demi looked beautiful, but I think that the dress was like a little too much for the American Music Awards. But I think that Selena is just rocking it, and her hair. I love the blonde hair. Yeah, I am all here for the blonde hair. <laughs> Me love too. the bob as well, and I love. I mean. I pay attention to this, but I love how the roots, her dark roots are kind of showing through mm -hmm. the blonde. I think that makes it so much more, she's able to rock the blonde that way. It's not yeah. just like platinum. Miley does that with her hair too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's like a look. Like, should I be doing that with my hair? <laughs> that's like a look that everyone's doing. I'm in between dyes right now, yeah. so it's like not really happening. I do it on accident. So. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like it's like, that's such a look that so many people are doing these days yeah, that like right. I feel like I missed out on. Right. Um, but yeah, she looked absolutely amazing. Was she like just absolutely gorgeous in person? Um, okay, so here's the thing. She had a little wardrobe malfunction. Oh, she did? She did. Um... <laughs> the dress was short, I will say that. The dress much. was very short, so when she walked, it righted up a little bit. So I mean, think about it, when you cheeks, wear leather, it's the like... The cheeks were out a little, but Ooh. nonetheless, I'm not mad about it. Yeah, no one else is mad about it. She looked amazing, and just like you were saying, the AMAs is the place to play with your fashion, to totally. go a little bit wild and crazy. Not Nick Cannon crazy, but a little bit wild and crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, Nick Cannon wilding out. Yeah, <laughs> wild and <laughs> out. Literally yeah, show. so I, that's why I think this is a, such a fun carpet yeah. to just watch and observe and to make a change. So good for Selena. Yeah, and then let's talk about my personal favorite couple of the of the evening, potentially of all time, <laughs> um, Ansel. Igort and uh, Violetta, his girlfriend, she's like a ballerina extraordinaire. I loved her dress because it gave me like ballerina vibes, but gone AMAs. Like it was risque and showed a lot of skin, even though it was like covering. But she also had like a leotard under. Ali Raceman has worn something similar to this before, and I loved that too because she's a gymnast and that's sort of like her look as well. I think Ali's was like Miss Haley Page. I don't know who designed um, Violetta's dress, but I thought they were so cute. I love seeing them out in public together because usually they just like are on Instagram so it's nice. She is so pretty. Yeah, she's she stunning. Is. She is I've, stunning. I stalk her on Instagram every once in a while. Same, and like and when I... she's on red carpets with him, she like blows him out of the water. Like I like him too, but she just looks so good always and she's just like a little ballerina that like, goes to like Juilliard or something and yeah, she just rocks good. the red carpets when <laughs> her boyfriend takes her. Yeah. He is so funny because he's kind of like a celebrity troll in his own right. Like, obviously, he's a celebrity, but he was running around with his phone being like, oh, my God, let's take a selfie, let's take a selfie. He, like, was pulling people in right in front of us. There was, like, a group of them all at once. It was just so funny to see him fanboy, and he was doing that with the BTS performance. During BTS I, 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 yeah. They literally cut to Ansel, who's, like, videotaping yeah. on his phone, like, cracking up. thought the whole thing was amazing. Um, what do you guys think of BTS, like, on the carpet? They were so excited to be there. Oh, my God. People apparently were sleeping outside of like Kimmel, the AMAs, to e even the airport, just to like be in the presence of these guys. During their performance on the carpet, they had some fans. The fans were crying. Like, what was it like? Did, yep. you, did you guys interview <laughs> they them? They were crying. They were crying. Um, so, 
let me back up here. So BTS, obviously they've been on the scene for a little bit, but they're a K-pop band. If you guys don't know who we're talking about. Yes. And back at Billboard Awards, we weren't really sure of the fandom that they do have. It's yeah, crazy. It's so crazy. at Billboard Awards, we probably started at like eight in the morning. There were fans there that had been there Camped out. previous, like for a couple hours before we even got there. Okay. It's so crazy. that's when we were like, wow, okay, this is something to watch. So fast forward to now, there were fans camped out when I got there, but the line was already like around the, the fence that was surrounding the carpet. And like these fans can't even see anything from there. That's what but I'm like, saying, just to just be in their presence. In their presence <laughs> and um, I don't know if you guys know this, but they actually broke a record, a Guinness World Record oh, on did? Twitter for most engagement for a music uh, group. Oh, so, from yeah. the AMAs? From the AMAs. Whoa, yeah. baby. So people really do care. I've never seen fans go this crazy for Yeah, like, like I've seen life. like Justin Bieber fans, One Direction fans, mm -hmm. Jonas Brother fans. Yeah, but it, it also wasn't just um, Korean fans. There were American fans. Yeah, you know, they're, they're all here Literally for all across the board. When they During their performance, when they showed it, like, Everyone knew all the words. I'm like, this mm -hmm. isn't even in English. Yeah. I, I heard like, baby and I heard DNA. Yeah, yeah and DNA, that was, that was like, pretty much it. It might be the, like the first time I've ever seen like girls crying at an award show. Yeah, not just for... like at a concert. <laughs> a concert, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, speaking of fandom, let's talk about Nick Jonas. I don't think we have a picture of what he was wearing, but I absolutely loved what he was wearing. He was wearing that leather jacket. Did you guys like his? I don't know. Like, I think that I think that his was like something cool and edgy and different. And of course, him and Demi got great pictures together, and everyone wants them to ruin the friendship. And I am so <laughs> shipping them. Like, when are they gonna get together? <laughs> ship, I thought ship. she she dated Joe Jonas. Though. Yeah, but yeah, Nick and Demi are best friends. They're best friends, and they like, you know, went on tour together. And I'm just I want them to date. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the actual show now because there's plenty to talk about there. Um, let me just, you know, transition gears. It started with Pink and Kelly Clarkson. They sang Everybody Hurts. That was, like, a really intense way to open the show, which mm -hmm. Jamie Foxx, like, actually, op like, had a cold open to introduce them. Um, it was a beautiful performance. It was the first time that these two had ever sang together. I was, like, so here for it because these are two icons of our time, and I don't think either of them really get enough credit for their talent. Um, what do you guys think of this performance, this duet? I loved it. Yeah, and I loved it too. It's crazy because they were kind of going back and forth on Twitter, kind of being like, I love you. No, you're great. Kelly you're was like nervous yeah. to meet Pink. Yeah, she was fan fangirling over her on Twitter, being like, are you kidding? You're such an idol. Um, I loved it. I thought they both looked amazing, obviously. But I don't know. It was just su such a... It was a collision of just both iconic singers. And um, Kelly just came out with her new single. Mm -hmm. And... She doesn't do a ton of carpets recently, so this is, I think, a pretty major carpet for her as of recent. Yeah, she looked absolutely gorgeous. She looked too. stunning. She looked great. And like, honestly, I want to say, sit down to all the body shamers that were giving her crap because I think she looks freaking un unbelievable. She's had two kids. Like, this woman is a talent, and I don't want to hear a word about the way she looks because I think she yeah. looks like a queen. But she's also spoken about how much happier she is, yeah. and it's so much more important for you to feel healthy and happier. A hundred percent. How... She said that when she was, like, super thin, she was depressed right. and miserable, and, like, that wasn't who she was. And it's, like, as long as she's healthy and happy, that's... that's what right. But... I think that this performance was really a testament to that. She seemed, like, so, like, present and in that moment, and they both were not lip-syncing, and you could tell, like, they were yeah. really giving that a performance they're all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that hug at the end was just... Oh, I, I was, like, it. crying. It was yeah, it was really <laughs> sweet. Um... Christina Aguilera also did a powerful um, performance to Whitney Houston. It was like a tribute. There was a lot of like back and forth controversy on the internet about this one, and there were some cringing faces in the audience. So I don't know what the people's problems were because I loved this. I really did. I think that she was the perfect choice for this. Not many people can cover Whitney Houston, and I really think she did her justice. But who was it? Was Pink cringed? Okay, and it was I didn't Pink think Justin she was. Hartley. Justin Hartley. Ugh. Do you think they were cringing, or like were they like had something in their eye? Maybe they had a wedgie. Okay, when yeah. I was watching Pink, she did not look like she was cringing. Pink she looked like after. she was into it and almost crying. And then at the end, she was a clapping. Applauding. So it was confusing. I only after the show saw on Twitter that people were saying that she was like cringing disgusted by it or whatever because yeah. she wasn't like doing Whitney justice, which I don't believe that at all. I think she was like 
in Pink, awe. Pink tweeted after, like, I was not cringing. I thought that this was an amazing performance. But, yeah, I don't know. I, there was definitely some controversy on the internet. I didn't really understand why. I think that, like, there were a million amazing choices they could have chosen, but they chose Christina, and she was 100% worthy. It's like... She did so well. I heard some people <laughs> saying, like, oh, like, you could have picked Ariana Grande, you could have picked Jennifer Hudson, like, whatever. Christina Aguilera has been around longer than all of them, and if you're going to pick someone to tribute to an icon and a legend who's been around for years, like, decades, like, someone who has to have had that much experience in the industry, I think, like, you can't just, like, pick the newest pop star, you know? Yeah, here's yeah. what I think. I think that she was 100% the person to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I think, obviously, the girl can sing, me personally, I would have liked her to have stayed away from trying to spruce it up and just have been completely um, original Whitney. Just how right. Whitney did it. That's just how I like to hear it. And not that she didn't do Whitney justice. Of course she did. And she's such a powerhouse singer. Um, I, I think it may have thrown people off that she was just kind of wanting to like spice it up a little bit she did a lot of the uh, like right. i don't know for me that you was maybe a little bit like, too much can't help herself because totally and i <laughs> she's I like get, in the moment and i get <laughs> those that she grunts just come out <laughs> totally and i get that she wanted to do whitney justice which she totally did um she couldn't have done a bad job it's christina, it's christina aguilera, aguilera. Yeah. but i think maybe people just were expecting the original way that Whitney did it. I think the problem when women cover other women's voices, similarly to when men cover other men's voices, it often gets compared back to the original artist. When I think like Demi Lovato did the tribute to Lionel Richie, and that their voices are so naturally different that you don't expect them to sound similar, whereas Christina and Whitney are unique artists, but like do have similar sounds, so I feel like Christina felt like she had to set herself apart a little right. bit. Make it a where, little different. Right. Yeah. Whereas like when, when Demi did it for Lionel Richie, it was like totally her own thing, you know, where everyone kind of expected it to be different because she's not a male voice singing male music. Right. right. Um, I agree with that. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was amazing to watch and I had nothing negative to say about it. And I'm usually one to be like, I had a problem with X, Y, and Z. I had no problems with it. So someone I did have a problem with. <laughs> oh, uh, there we Tracy go. Ellis Ross as the host. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love her. She is hilarious. I love Blackish. It's a great show. I was so distracted by her the whole time. Like, first of all, she came out in this, like, bronze copper chameleon dress right from the get-go. I was like, okay, we're here tonight with, with Tracy. Um, <laughs> this is the Tracy yikes. show. <laughs> yes, okay. yes. That is my problem. It felt like the Tracy show. It felt like Tracy was like, here I am, and here's my mom, and here's yeah. this. And I was like... This isn't about you. When a good host makes it about everybody else, I felt like it was a little bit too much about herself, and it was her first time doing something like this. So I give her some credit because it's definitely not an easy feat. But I was, like, distracted by her, whereas I feel like they're supposed to be, like, moving the show along. Like, Carrie Underwood and Brad Paisley do the CMAs every year, and they are both country artists, but it's not about them, and they don't make it about them. It's like, let's keep the show moving, you know? Right. We got word that Tracy was the host and Is it was, that, a, was that last minute? Did they decide that was, yesterday? We got that a couple days before <laughs> okay. and it was confirmed but it was kind of like really? Yeah like what? I, like I get that her mom is Has being like, honored but at the same time it's like really? Well, I like she her. was like dressing like her mom during it. Yeah, and she it, it was just wore. confusing. I was like, "Are you like trying to be your mother while being the yeah. host and yeah. take over the show?" I'm confused. Um, I mean, the AMAs always pick some questionable hosts, in my opinion. Like last year was Gigi Hadid and and Jay Farrow, and like Gigi's a model and she's great and she had some funny moments, but I was like, what? why aren't they picking, like, a musician or, like, Ludacris always hosts shows, like, where's he? I right. don't know. I just felt like <laughs> I was, Luda. like, like I, I don't know. Like Maybe P, P. Diddy. Maybe. Brother Love. Brother Love, yeah, who changed his name. But he changed it back, actually, because <laughs> he, he wasn't, he wasn't yes. into it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just am, like, I guess they're trying to pick someone different. But, like, I think when it comes to award shows, like, I just can't really enjoy it unless it's, like, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Seth Meyers, like, someone like that. Like, that's what I want to see as a host because they're the people... I mean, with Gigi, they did have Jay Farrow, an SNL guy, and I thought that that was better. Like, give it to someone, like, give it to Michael Che or Colin Jost, like, someone who has kind of stand-up experience and also, like, hosting experience. Tracy's an actress, mm -hmm. and she's amazing at what she does, but I felt like she was acting as a host. 
Right. right. You know what I mean? Yes. But you know what? I almost think the AMAs don't even need a host. They don't. They don't because it's, a it's basically a concert. And it in is. between concerts, it's yes. awards. And then the people that are giving the awards can announce the next concert. And Honestly, it's true. I've been to the AMAs before and I, as like a seat filler in high school. And like I was distracted by the host even then. I yeah. was like, I just want to know who wins. And I want to know yeah. who's... Perf- I really was only there for like the performances, really. Yeah. Right. Well, I feel like it affects the flow of the show. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It just yeah. be performance award, performance award. But to have the host come in and, I don't know, yeah. not doing it for me. Yeah, she wasn't doing it for me either. Um, let's talk about something that we can't not talk about. Selena Gomez's performance. So, Liza mentioned that she saw, like, a beat-up car outside of yeah. the award show. Yes. Which was a part of Selena's performance. We'll talk about that in a second. But it was, like, a car crash scene. She had blood on her face, blood on her knees. She was in, like, a jumper, like, a, like this, like, little... It was teddy, a nightie. Like, a nightgown yeah. thingy. Yeah, I don't know what it was. It was, like, a little silk thing. She looked adorable, I thought. But, like, there was a lot of controversy about the lip-syncing. I don't have as much of a problem with that as I do with, like, what the actual performance was trying to tell me. Because lip-syncing, people were giving her a lot of hate for... First of all, the girl just got out of, like, a serious organ transplant. She just gave an amazing performance. I'm not going to give her any shade for lip-syncing because BTS lip-synced the whole song. And, like, I don't know if that's, like, a sexist thing, but, like, I was like, why is no one talking about that? Like, yeah, they're amazing dancers and they gave a great performance, but, like, not a single word was actually sung. So that's just my bone to pick with that because everybody lip-synced. Pink lip-synced. We'll talk about all of them, but, like... I don't know. What do you think of Selena's performance as a whole? And, like, talk about this car situation. Cause, like, what what happened? Like, what was that wolves about? Okay, so I got there at 8 a.m. And I just had things to do. I was anxious. I was trying to get to our truck farm. And on my way to my, the truck farm, I see this red beat-up car. And there's branches stuck in the hood of it. And I'm like, who the actual hell drove that? To sell? <laughs> like, I'm like, whose car is that? Like, I don't. I just don't understand. And later I found out that it was part of her performance it was just being parked outside real quick <laughs> well, like, what <laughs> was, was just waiting for what was the story like it was like a car so, accident yeah it looked like a car accident which you mentioned earlier was a little bit i don't know if i like that yeah like it was i felt was she I don't know in how the car that or was. did she get she was hit by it walking I, i'm not sure she was like on the roof of the car like rolling around and then she like had blood all over so i imagine she like was either hit by the car or was in the car but like to me i i, I love the song wolves and i'm like yeah. so in on her and Marshmallow's, like, collaboration. But, like, I don't feel like what Wolves is about is that scene. Yeah. And the music video, it looks nothing like that. I feel like oftentimes, like, I just watched a music video. It came out last week. I feel like sometimes when they do a performance, like, right after a music video, they, like, kind of keep it in the same theme. Mm-hmm. I felt like this was just totally out there. And it felt, like, a little bit insensitive to, like, car accidents, which are super serious. Like, it didn't... Wolves is about, like, I think a romance. Right. right. Well, it's about trying right. to get to... The well, did other, you yeah. see her at the end where yeah, she, she was, went, like... Thank you. Which is now yeah. a gif circulating Thank the internet. I the know, AMAs today have been, like, very emotional for Selena Gomez, though, in the past few years. Like, she had the performance of A Heart Wants What It Wants. Oh, where yeah, she, well, she cried. had, like, crying. About Justin Bieber. Yeah. And then... she's back together with surprise. Last okay. year, she did the speech where she basically talked about... But not talked about through. going to mm-hmm. rehab and stuff. Yeah. And now this year, I felt like That's she was true. just like, it's She kind of hibernates to do the this. AMAs. Yeah. Right. The AMAs is her stage. I, I will say, though, apparently Literally. she had, like, a panic attack before going on stage, which, like, I'm very sensitive to. And, like, I hope that I she's would. okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would, too. I mean, she's been, like, she has had a year. Like, this girl went through serious stuff. Like, I watched the full interview series with um, the Today Show where she was, like, going in on the whole experience that she had. Like, she thought she was going to have to wait, like, seven years for this transplant. Her friend stepped up and did it for her. And, like, it was a very serious surgery with mm-hmm. months of recovery. So to be able to get back up on stage that same year that something like that happened, this was her first TV performance of the year. Like, that's what I'm saying. I have no problem if she was, like, lip-syncing with music or singing with it in the background. Don't care about that. Right. I was more just like, what the heck is happening? Like, what am I watching? Right. You're well, picking her up and then putting the her down. The marshmallow DJing yeah. on top of it all was yeah, just like drums, a little... Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, what is this? A bit odd, <laughs> yeah. um, to say the very least. But, you know, I'm here for I Selena. I still love her. <laughs> I love her. I absolutely love her. Like, I love Selena Gomez. I think she's so pretty. And I so did pretty. think she looks really pretty. She was so I mean, pretty. She, yeah, she looked amazing. Even with blood all over her knees. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, speaking of obscure performances, let's talk about Pink's weird thing she did. <laughs> um, so, like, TMZ leaked some footage, like, the day before of, like, Pink just, like, hanging off the side of a building. <laughs> Actually dangling. Like, literally dangling. So she, like, did this thing where she, I'm sure everyone who's watching this show watched it, but, like, she was hanging off the side of the building with all these dancers, and I will say I have seen a performance like this in person, like, Oh, it happened like at my college they did this performance on the side of the wall and it's so cool to see in person but I think translating to TV it didn't work for me because with the with the overhead shot it looked like they were just standing on a ground it did look easy mm-hmm. and of course it wasn't but it, it wasn't. just looked like it was just having fun also did they just tell guests not to they didn't rent those rooms out to guests I don't get yeah, or maybe people were I saw like one rooms. person <laughs> waving from the side oh, I literally was being like oh my, I god. Like, oh my god pink is outside <laughs> right. my like, window like literally opened the window being like can you sign this for me yeah. Like, they're like taking a selfie yeah. with like pink swinging around the background. Like, how did they manage this that? isn't I don't like know. the first time pink has done like weird like Cirque du Soleil she, she stuff. She did say in her carpool karaoke with um, James Corden that she sings better when she's upside down. Yeah, I okay, don't so get maybe it. Maybe she wasn't lip syncing. She was that lip-syncing. was a thought of mine. That's what I thought. On. How do you know? She's projecting off the side of a building, and like when you're dancing it just that much, perfect. Well, that's like with with BTS. It's like I didn't have a problem with them doing some lip syncing because they were dancing to the point like where I'd be drenched in sweat. Like right. you can't dance and sing that much like that. So that's why I was like, Pink is literally being propelled off the side of a building, doing spinning in the air dance moves. She, would, you would have heard her panting. You know what I or mean? Or like her voice right. would just go, ah, ah. Like really when she does yeah. aerial somersaults. <laughs> yes. Like I um, would have like been like a heavy breathing. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, listen, it was really cool. Um, there was a video that she reposted from AMAs and she was kind of nervous about the whole entire thing. And I, I think she pulled off the performance really well. I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, her performances are always kind of like really unique in that sense. But I don't know. It was... I, I don't know if she was lip syncing or not. It was different. I just feel like it's a little much. Her. It's she like did. mostly about the music and when you can't really sing because you're like flipping over and over again and like hanging from walls and stuff. It just kind of gets away from like why you're Here's a question. That. Do you tune into the AMAs to hear the raw talent or do you tune in to see a spectacle performance? Because I think that's like the, the artist might honestly want the answers to that because right. cause I don't really even know what I want. I think for me just as like a consumer of music I prefer to see someone like Shawn Mendes get up there and like actually sing Yes. and I want to see that he's really talented whereas I know Pink is talented. She just performed five minutes ago and actually sang, but now I'm watching her propel off the side of a building. I think I prefer the singing, right. but what do you mm-hmm. guys think? I, well, oh, cool. no, no, sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, I can tell you that I enjoyed Christina Aguilera way more just standing there than I did yeah. Pink flying around. Um, okay, personally for me, I get very bored very easily. Okay. I don't know if I have undiagnosed ADHD or something, but... <laughs> no, but that, um, I mean, so many people I think agree with you. It's like, people go see Britney Spears in Vegas. Right, but like I said before, the whole entire thing is a concert. So you have performance award, performance award, performance award. And then it kind of gets to be, okay, we get the whole shtick of this. We, I kind of want to see something different, and I thought it was amazing. I thought it was, you know, a spectacle to watch while she was singing or not singing, I don't yeah. know, it, it caught my attention, and it showed me that she's not afraid to be fearless. I, I think that that's so much of the music industry in general, you know, like, do you want to go see Adele stand alone in front of a microphone and sing for three hours, or do you want to see Britney Spears maybe lip sync, but give you the performance of a lifetime, you know what right. I mean? So it's like, they're both talent in different mm-hmm. ways, and they both can actually sing, but it's like, the performances they provide are very different. Right. So that's why I think what Pink did last night or two nights ago was really unique because she showed you both and she was in a position where she was able to perform twice. Like, right. I don't that doubt that cool. she can sing. Right. I mean, we know this, obviously. But I think the problem with like Selena Gomez's performance is people were doubting that she could sing. You know? And that's, yeah. and that's where I start to have an issue with like the lip syncing is like, well, do you ever really sing? Like, that's why I was excited that Shawn Mendes sang because I feel like I've seen him like on so many, you know, pop radio stations and like, can this kid actually sing or no? And he showed mm-hmm. us that he can. You know, he's saying there's nothing holding me back, and I was I was into it. Um, another performance that was definitely singing that was really, really cool um, was Imagine Dragons and Khalid. They did a medley of Young, Dumb, and Broke and Thunder, which are two of the top songs on the charts right now, and I love them both so much, and I love them even more together, and where can I buy this version <laughs> of this? I loved it. I agree, and I think... I think we've spoken about this before. Imagine Dragons is so underrated. So as a underrated. Band. I love them. Dan Every Reynolds. song. Every every song they write <laughs> is a banger. It's such a hit. Like 
is always on the charts, but like I would never be like, I'm gonna buy tickets to an Imagine Dragons concert. But like now why I am. Not? Yeah, like now I, I need go. to. I hope he tours with Khalid. Yeah, oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. I loved this performance. I think that this was probably the most underrated performance of the night. It wasn't something that everyone was talking about on social media, but I was like, I watched it three times because I was so yeah. into it. Right. And it I really also good. loved it because Khalid's kind of the newer generation. Imagine He's Dragons so have been around for a while, so it was kind of mixing old and new and it spiced it up for each other. They, they, it was a symbiotic relationship for both. You know it what I really mean? They was. both benefited from it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it looked like they were having an amazing time. Both yeah. Dan and Khalid were on their knees at one point, mm -hmm. like facing each other, just busting it And they're it such out. emotional songs, too. Yeah. I was like, ugh. Yes. I hope they sell this. I hope they like put that out somewhere because I'm going to have to like you know, figure out a way to get listen the, to the YouTube. Yeah, get to listen to the YouTube <laughs> yeah. video over and over again. Um, it was so, so, so good. Um, someone else who was amazing, who like Skyped in was <laughs> Lady Gaga. Was is on tour right now. She's Joanne touring, which like I'm dying to see because she is like one of I my heroes. Her. I love, love, love Gaga. She. Um, performed at a piano, like, super raw. Another one whose documentary you must watch, Five Foot Two on Netflix, so good. Um, she was, like, so pure, and I just think she is such a genuine, natural talent. I love watching her perform live. I think that she's someone who's similar to Pink, does a really good job doing something crazy and then doing something raw, mm -hmm. like, side by side, you know? I agree. Yeah, yeah. I think she's someone that really you can see a fine line between singer and artist, and I think she's a true artist in she, yeah. her performance, in the way she sings, the way she puts on a show. I think every single aspect and every single detail is carefully planned by her, and she's very involved. Right. Um, we saw a lot of that in her documentary. Go watch it, it's amazing. <laughs> um, I don't know, these documentaries are just like really it's making, making me, me like, obsessed with love these people. These artists. Right, like, yeah. I feel like I am best friends with Demi Lovato, and Lady Gaga's like my aunt, and like <laughs> yeah. we're all friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like texting and exactly. You know, yeah, like, oh, Gaga, like my friend, she was amazing last night. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I thought she I don't was know unreal. Why. And that piano, I want it. I don't play the so piano, but I want it. Yeah, like I need it for my house. Yeah. Just like yeah. it's a piece of furniture. <laughs> right. That I can like lay on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretend to sing on. Yeah. What do you think? I thought it was great. I think that Gaga is she is a good example of like what to do. So if she is. is like a little too far that way, like watch Gaga because she her, like her performance and her voice, like it's just a perfect balance. Like of right. like performing and then also but like doing the vocals as well as right she's so good yeah talking about killer vocals i have to bring up alessia cara who is such a pure genuine talent i've seen she her live she so opened good. for coldplay when i saw coldplay last year and I, that's when i like fell in love with her because she went up there with like a messy bun and like no makeup this week she like showed up full glam and i was like okay we are growing into a woman now. Like, she looks beautiful with or without makeup, mm -hmm. but I loved her look. She had this, like, cool athleisure thing going on, like, hood with sparkles, and they did, like, a slower version. I loved that version. It was, that's what I'm saying. Like, all so these versions good. of these songs, I must be yeah. able to find them somewhere. It was, somewhere. like, acoustic mm -hmm. of, you like, know, an electronic yeah, dance. Of, an electronic I loved song. all yeah. the live music. There was a lot of, like, instruments last mm -hmm. night, instrumental there was. music, and it was, I loved that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And then Portugal, the the man, the Portugal, the man, they Felix even still. like put on their screen like instruments up here, right. no computers and I loved or something that. like that. I love that, which I was, was there crazy. Yeah, it just shows, you know, you don't have to have a computer to make music anymore. Like, you can still have, you know, instruments and play. Do you know, who, right? You know who does the best job with that? And he wasn't there last night, but Ed Sheeran. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone's ever seen him live, but like he does that thing where he like loops his own voice and like pedals with his feet. It's yes. like the coolest thing ever. You should watch it on YouTube. Um, let's talk about some of the big winners of the night. Bruno Mars won the most awards and wasn't even there. Uh, yep. He wasn't was, even there. Wasn't so there. disappointed. Where the heck was he? Peter Jean Hernandez. Where was he? <laughs> like I was so confused. I was like, if you're I'm sorry, like, with, it's not the Grammys, like, it's the AMAs, but if you know that you're winning the most awards of the night, you show up. Yeah. I mean, it depends on where he I was. I guess. Maybe he was, like, on tour. He was in a mini A lot of them were on tour. Yeah, so, I mean, they could have done, like, a Gaga-type thing, though, where they, like, kind of showed up, kind of not. I don't know. Like, to be the biggest winner of the night and not even be there, I was shocked. Um, yeah. But New Artist of the Year was Niall Horan, which Me. I thought was so interesting <laughs> for him to win New Artist when, like, he's been so famous for so long. We love but Niall. But I love Niall. Um, I can I just tell a quick fun fact? Yeah, let's Okay, so I've probably told the story a million times, but my first AMAs, um, Niall Horan came up to the platform, and all I could remember was he <laughs> smelled so good. Not that I was actually sniffing him, but he came up to the platform, and he still smelled amazing, so I don't know what kind of cologne he's wearing, but 
<laughs> ladies. We should find it. Hygiene on point. So <laughs> I'm I'm all about that. What do you I think of Niall? Uh, he also looked great. He was like in He's that checkered such a suit. And I love yes, his look. I love yeah, the suit. he went from the checkered suit to his kind of like boho music. That was like hat. a yeah. John Mayer sort of I vibe. I think he's he was like, doing. I, I think he's like taking his own spin on like John Mayer, Ed Sheeran, like becoming this mm-hmm. like Niall Horan. You know what I mean? Like he's really coming into his own as an artist, and I think that like. From One Direction, from everyone that's spun off and done their own things, he is doing it the best, in my opinion, in this moment. I agree. Like, Harry's having a moment. Zayn sort of did a thing. I think that Niall is going to take this the farthest, in my opinion. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. He's just such a genuine guy. He's You you hear him in his interview, and he's just, he's real talk. Like, he'll tell it how it is, and you see him in his performance, and he's he gets up there, he's just so giddy. And he stops singing for a second to have everyone be like slow hands and everyone was just like singing it. Uh, he did it so many times he was probably I so happy he was like your turn and then he was like, so, you know what's so funny is you know how on instagram now you can like see when people comment on other people's things yeah. he commented on Haley seinfeld's picture of her like nearly crying being like my first ama's performance like you did so great Haley. Wait, we love you like, he also oh. did it for ansel because ansel <laughs> elgort so commented on his picture and he was like oh such a stand-up man bro like, like he's, he's so interactive so sweet. He's so sweet. but like when yeah, i tag him in my pictures he doesn't respond yeah to like me, so. <laughs> Um, you have a big celebrity here, um, Niall. Why are yeah. you not responding to her? Seriously. Um, another big winner, Lady Gaga, won Favorite Pop Female Artist. I was glad that she was able to perform and, like, you know, have that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, Chainsmokers won Favorite Electronic Dance Music Group. Chainsmokers always win so many awards. I feel like we talked about how Imagine Dragons are underrated. Chainsmokers are having their moment. Like, yeah. I feel like they're always winning awards at these shows. Right, yeah. I agree. And also, um, for those of you who watch Stranger Things, we had an epiphany at the office that um, Alex Paul is a younger Hopper. Oh, interesting. Oh my so, gosh, that's such a good call. Maybe they're related. Maybe. maybe in an alternate universe. The one that was in the plaid suit. Um, I don't remember what he was wearing, the taller one. Yes. yes. He was wearing a really nice plaid Young suit, Hopper. too. Yeah, also, yeah. I feel like, let me just say this. Everyone gives Drew, like, cutie of the chain smokers. I think last night Alex had it. I think he's very attractive, so that's uh, just yeah. my two cents. He had a great suit on. Yes. Agreed. Um, and then another iconic moment from the night was when Linkin Park won, and they gave a really special tribute to Chester Bennington. Um, that was really nice, really touching. Mm-hmm. I think it was, like, a really nice way to kind of, like, close out this year. A lot of horrible things have happened, and it was, like, really beautiful speech from mm-hmm. them. It was really nice. I was glad that they won. Um, speaking of uh, Imagine Dragons, they won favorite pop duo rock, rock group. Like, thank goodness. They deserve it. It's about time. Well-deserved Imagine Dragons. Um, favorite soul R&B was Beyonce. Wasn't there. <laughs> Surprise. Not really. Um, favorite country artist, Keith Urban. What do you think? Keith. I love Keith. I think he deserves it. His um, speech to Nicole was made amazing. me cry. Well, okay, so... <laughs> I was like, I need someone that loves me that much. <laughs> Here's the thing that we were discussing is I love that they both kind of let each other steal the limelight when it's each other's turn. So mm-hmm. last night, it's the AMAs. It's not the Grammys. It, you know what I mean? It's not, you know, the biggest night in music. But Nicole was there, an Oscar winner on the red carpet. She, she didn't had wear anything that was too, too um, you know, out there. She Which she usually Keith, does. Right. She let Keith take the show. And I loved it. But it was just so sweet. And he was actually, like, pulling her to the platform, like, what dragging her. Couple. And oh, so they were just cute. so sweet together. And I, I just love how supportive they are. So and, supportive. Um, <laughs> like, so supportive of each other. Like, love each other so much. <laughs> no, but they were so sweet. And they were just, like, like rubbing each other's back the whole time. And I don't know. He, like, handed so them the trophies and was like, she deserves some of these. Yes. But uh. in all seriousness, Ripcord was an amazing album. Um, I have Blue Your Color is one of my favorite songs um, of this past year in country music. And I love Keith Urban, so congrats. I do too. <laughs> that was her acceptance speech. <laughs> on Keith's speech. I'd like to thank Keith and Nicole for being my inspiration. Are they your parents? <laughs> um, no, but they're my couples. They have like. Imagine if that was your parents. Like, what is life? Honestly, can they though? adopt me? Yeah, maybe you should ask them. Um, okay, this was a weird award. I just thought, like, I think the winner is deserving, but the name of the award was weird. Favorite adult contemporary artist. I thought that was a little bizarre, Was Shawn Mendes. So, like, they picked the youngest person and gave him the adult award. What does adult <laughs> contemporary mean? He's a young I adult. I have no idea. I don't know. Um, well, whatever it was, I'm glad he won because he's a great singer. And he beat Ed Sheeran and Bruno Mars, which is crazy because they're, like, the two crazy. biggest, but, like, but what is that category? <laughs> I've never I don't heard know. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> he's, he's above, right, he's he above minor them. age, but, okay. Let me just say this. If you guys watch his performance and didn't automatically fall in love with him, I don't know what's wrong with you because yeah. I yeah. literally was sitting How old there was like, he, like 20? 
I think so. I think he's I 19, think he's 19, actually. Hey, my boyfriend, is he, is he legal? <laughs> Call he's me about Sean. 18. Sean he's Mendes. so cute. Hey. Oh, my gosh. And he's, he's just raw talent. He was playing his guitar the entire yeah. time. He... I've never seen a performance where he kind of took it to the next level. He really, really brought the vocals on this one. Sean, we love you. We um, do. The award that I thought was, like, I really didn't know which way it was going to go was Collab of the Year. The songs yes. that were up for that were Despacito, Closer, Starboy, I'm the One, Don't Want to Know. Those are, like, the biggest songs of the year. Mm -hmm. I was like, I actually have no idea. Despacito won, which now in hindsight is not surprising. No. Um, if that thing was everywhere. Yeah. If you it was everywhere. Yeah. I thought that maybe um, Closer could have won, but I feel like that won last year. Why do I feel like it was nominated two years ago? Yeah, row? it's because of the cutoff. That song won like a million awards already, so I thought maybe it would just right. take it again, but it didn't. Can I tell you, I think going back to Video of the Year. Which was, so, was uh, That's What I Like, Shape of You, and Despacito Correct, again. and That's What I Like won. Um, for those of you who haven't seen these videos, you should go watch them all. They're really great. I love YouTube but videos. But <laughs> for That's What I Like, I'm very surprised. I don't know. Not that it wasn't great, but I think Despacito had an amazing video, and That's What I Like is just kind of Bruno dancing around, and there's little edits. That's What I Like also won favorite song. Which I was surprised by too, because it was up against uh, it was favorite song for like mm -hmm. R and B. It, it won like every award. He really mm -hmm. took the cake on that song, but I don't know. Carat. I feel like Despacito for sure had it for me with Video of the Year. So mm. I think that was everywhere. Even without Justin Bieber, I'd hear it on the radio and I'd be like, oh, this song again. I but wish, in I a wish, good way. Um, Look what you made me do was nominated, but I suppose that will be next year for video. Um, Wait, tour of the year, I literally cannot agree more with. Best <laughs> choice ever, Coldplay won. They were up against Garth Brooks and U2, which I'm sure those tours were insane as well. But Coldplay, if you can see them in your lifetime, you absolutely must. Best concert I've been to in my entire life. Have either of you been? I, yeah, I actually been. went um, a couple I went to the Rose months Bowl. ago. Exactly, at the Rose Bowl. Ooh. I went the day after you. <laughs> They give you these bracelets. I was there. Steven Steven was, was there. there I was there. Our engineer Steven was there. Me and 100,000 of my best friends. Um, <laughs> With our colored lights. They gave me these color around. lights and, like, bracelets. It was, I felt like I was part of something greater than myself. Like, oh, I've never, yeah. like, I was in it. I was actually crying the whole time. It was the most amazing concert ever. They always say, like, oh, it's our last tour. No, it never is. Yeah. Go see them if you can. It is so worth it. Like, honestly, in my opinion, most deserving award of the night. Oh, because yeah. to go on a world tour like that, they've been around the world, and, like, they're back in L.A. doing it again. Like, a week ago. I was like, people are going to Coldplay. I'm just going to keep going around. Just, just keep traveling. <laughs> just keep making circles around um, the globe. And then Diana Ross won the um, American Music Lifetime Achievement Award. What do you guys think of that? Okay, I think we have to talk about her performance. Yeah. Because I... It was honestly the best 15 minutes of that night watching the show. I thought it was amazing. She looked amazing, too. She the really best, did. There was, like, a couple laughable moments. The best was when she was coming on the stairs. She was, like, taking her time to come down the stairs, and she was like, I'm coming. Um, she was literally, like, <laughs> coming down the stairs, and then she's saying, I'm coming out. And then everyone, everyone in the crowd was just singing so along to the it. lyrics. They had a little um, montage in the beginning of, you know, vintage footage that they pulled and um, previous shows. And I honestly, it was cool. I, like... It felt that you're you're watching a little piece of history with her, yeah. and she's mm -hmm. such an icon. Um, it was really cool to watch, and I loved all of her songs. And in the end, she obviously pulled up her grandchildren, and then eventually all of her family. And she it was, was like a family so reunion. Often, it, it seriously was. It seriously was. Her daughter um, presented her with the award, and she goes, "Mom." And um, Diana goes, "What?" <laughs> like she forgot she was on stage, and I like died. It was amazing. But she's just so like genuine and cool, and like I said, an idol in her. Yeah, she's an icon. Yeah. Um, Okay, so out of these, we have a couple minutes left. Out of all of these big winners tonight or from this show, who do you feel like is like really going to take it home at the Grammys? Because that is like coming up soon, and that is the big music night of the year. Um, do you think it's going to be Bruno? Do you think Ed Sheeran's going to come in? Is Adele going to come? Like, as I know, 25, I think, could be nominated for that this time around, even though it wasn't eligible for AMAs. Are any of these artists that you saw like going to have a Grammys moment? Do you have any predictions? Um, I just always vote for Bruno, no matter what, because <laughs> Bruno Mars is my favorite. <laughs> so yeah. I just am always hoping that he, like, I wins. Um, I have to say Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. I think Kendrick Lamar... He was, like, sh like snubbed a little. He this was. Week. He was. Humble lost. I know, and I think, I think he'll have a yeah. big night at the Grammys. I also think that 
Ed Sheeran. Yeah. I love Ed Sheeran. Do you know, I, do you know who I think will also have a big Grammys and is Gaga for mm-hmm. Joanne? Because our pop, like, really flopped. And she talked about that in her documentary. Again, watch it. But, um, like, it. Art Pop didn't do so well. And, like, Born This Way and all her past albums did. And then Joanne is, like, a comeback in a totally new sound. She has, like, country-sounding music on it. She has pop music on it. She has soul. Like, I feel like Joanne deserves some justice. And so hopefully we get it. Justice for Joanne. Justice for Joanne. But if anyone who's watching wants to continue the AMA conversation and into further award shows because we're all going to be back where can they find you on social media you can find me at lauren t pacheco and thanks guys for having me again you can find me on instagram at liza.rubin or fat but skinny but fat and you guys can find me everywhere at danny Golub. thank you so much for tuning in this was so fun we'll be back for all the award shows this season so make sure you check us out here on after buzz from executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.